Having recently uh, did the reclaim on those printed circuit boards and pulling all that socketed TTL logic off, I thought I'd go ahead and actually use the uh, programmer that we recently picked up. The uh, don't remember the model number. Uh, it's a TL8662 plus. Don't know if that was in focus. Get it back on camera here. So. I've got some 7400s in my hand. I've picked the 7400 device, HC or LS, and let's just drop it in the socket and see what the testing shows. I'm kind of working around the camera here, so it's a little difficult to access stuff, but I thought we'd go through a few of these devices and just see how they test. That doesn't want to sit in there flush because it has a bent pin. Always challenging. So we have it in the socket. Uh, how do I test here? Clear. One device connected. Nope, that's not it. So we've got 74 LS. There it is. Okay. It's an 8-pin dip. No, it's not an 8-pin dip. It's a 16-pin dip. 7400. Logic IC select. Chip test. And it says all four of the gates tested normal. That's a, a quad to input NAND gate. Pretty unexciting. Here's the other one we got off the boards for reclaim. Let's go ahead and test. And all four, again, NAND gates tested good. Now I've got one that came off another board. It's a national park. It's got a remark on it. Uh, not the prettiest looking logic device I've ever seen. We'll go ahead and click test on that. And it says it's operational, but I'm going to go ahead and bend out pin 1, which I believe is an input. Now that probably didn't bend out far enough. I want it actually floating. It should pull high if it's floating. And we should see a failure. Assuming I can get it into the socket. And hopefully we'll see a failure here. Yep, and unit one test error. So, uh, you know, I have no idea what kind of speed it's testing things at. Uh, I'm assuming it's just testing it at 5 volt logic levels. So let's find a little more complex device. I believe these are 132s. So, device, or select IC, 74132, let's see what we find. We find a 74HCLS132, empty socket should fail. Oh, don't know how to get back into the test menu there, that's a little clumsy in the software. Uh, oh, I think it's test right here. So, it did not like that. Let me reread the part number on that. 74HCT, oh, it's a 74HCT32. I read the part number wrong. So, back to select IC. Take a 7432. I would expect this to pass. And again, there being four, uh, 32 is what, four OR gates, I believe, or is it NOR gates? I don't remember. Again, I'd like something a little more complex than just a straight gate here. Let's see what we've got here. Seventy-four. I think that's a 138, which if I remember right is a Emux. select the 
device. 138 should be a little more complex device. Yeah, three to eight line decoder. So it's a DMUX. Oh, it's interesting that it's actually labeled in G1, G2A, G2B. That's really sweet. So cool. Uh, need to see that work. What else have I got floating around in the bin here? There was some. I think those are 7408s. Rather boring. I don't have enough light down here to really see. 7406 should be interesting. If I remember right, that is an open collector output. Could be wrong. Wouldn't be the first time today. No, it's actually 7406. Just the fact that I see six devices here says to me it's either an inverter or a buffer in the package. That's kind of cool. I'm still struggling with enough light to be able to read the part numbers. I'm not up in the lab. 7401. Why not? So let's pick the device. 7401. Obviously, it's got four gates inside of it, and it tests okay. So, kind of slick. I'm afraid this is going to be a pretty short video. It's at a 123, I believe. Yeah, 74, 123. Select IC, 74, 123. Yeah, one read, one A, one B, two read, two A, two B. Only it's all test errors. That's interesting. Make sure that's a 123, 74, 123N. Interesting. I think there's one more here. Doesn't like that either. Interesting. Swap on the other glasses so I can actually read the part number on the package. Definitely 74123. socket of course should fail. The odds of both of these being bad seems pretty slim. And, uh, it doesn't like them. That's quite interesting. So uh, it's not calling for any kind of adapters. I'm going to set those aside. It would be interesting if the two identical boards I parted out actually had issues. 7474. I believe it's a D flip-flop. So it'll be interesting to see it test that. So 74, yeah, LS 74. Yep, so it's a set reset test flop uh, and it says it's happy with it. So actually pretty cool here. Uh, Oh, programmers moved off camera since I've touched it here. And the second one I had tested normal as well. Let me kind of randomly pick around on what's in the box here, see if there's anything else interesting. That's an AND gate. We looked at a 7406. This is a uh, hex inverter, 7404. 
404. Oops, select. Yep, six inverters in it, but it says look normal. There's actually a little pile of LS 138s here. Actually, ALS 138s, but I'm not going to be picky. Select IC 138. That's really nice. Uh, did we look at a 138 before? We may have. So, anyhow, I don't, there's a whole bunch more to see here. Kind of nice to be able to uh, pick through these and get some idea if they're good or not. It's a little bit of a mystery why the. Uh, 74 123s fail. One twenty three. Seventy four one twenty three. Again shows it in the top of the socket. I'm in the correct place. Quite interesting. Let's figure out what it 123 is. 74. Oh boy. Hard typing around the camera. Hard typing around the camera. Yeah. Straight to the PDF here. So dual retriggerable monostable multi vibrator with a reset so yeah with the uh, RC external connections here I'm not sure how it would test it if it's not going to oscillate <clears throat> although I would assume hmm if you can't trigger it and get it to produce any kind of output because we don't have an RC time constant set up, I would expect the device to fail, so that may well make sense. <laughs>